Congestion charges might be one of the most controversial and perhaps most hated policy of transportation planning, and with good reasons. Not only it is a direct tax on driving, it also goes against the very principle of driving itself, the complete freedom to go wherever you want, whenever you want. However, reality rarely aligns with public opinions. Congestion charging, if implemented under the right circumstances, would create a far greater societal benefit despite the additional tax burden on drivers. You, dear viewer, might have some very strong opinion about congestion pricing, but no matter which side of the discourse you are on, we can all agree on one thing. Traffic is bad, and we should reduce it as much as possible. Congestion charge is a direct way for municipalities to tackle traffic by making drivers conscious of the negative impact of their travel choices. Thus, forcing travelers to consider other modes of transit for their trip, thereby reducing traffic on the road. It is a relatively simple and effective traffic reduction policy. The question then becomes, just how effective is this policy? Is its traffic reduction effect worth the public outcries and scrutinies? Fortunately for us, many municipalities have implemented such policies to curb their chronic traffic problems which gave us a prime opportunity to see how they're implemented and their respective impact on the community they have been implemented in. Stockholm is certainly not the first thing that comes to people's mind when they think of congestion pricing, and with good reason. It is not the first city to implement congestion charges, it is not even the first city in Europe to implement it. However, Stockholm remains unique in studying the effects of congestion pricing because of its unique way of implementing the policy. The temporary trial of congestion charges first started in 2006. Its pricing structure is based on the time of day. The cost is higher during weekday rush hours and is almost completely non-existent during off-peak hours. The fee structure is relatively affordable at just $5 during the most expensive periods. After the trial period, the city removed the congestion charge policy and let the public decide in a referendum on whether or not to implement congestion pricing officially. Since then, congestion charges remain in effect until now. What is remarkable about Stockholm's implementation of congestion charging is just how effective it is. Immediately after the implementation, traffic volume in the city fell by 23%, thereby significantly easing traffic jams in the city. And despite some seasonal fluctuations, Traffic volume remained low throughout the trial period, and unlike some experts predicted, drivers simply didn't accept congestion charge as a cost of doing business. Year after year, Stockholm's traffic volume remained low when compared to the pre-congestion pricing years. Another unique aspect about Stockholm's case is how it managed to overcome one of the largest hurdles of implementing congestion charge, convincing the court of public opinion. Turns out, congestion charges effect was significant enough it managed to convince many Danzians of Stockholm that it is a viable policy to reduce traffic instead of being just another tax. You might still have some doubts about this type of policies, you might believe that congestion charges are unfairly targeted towards drivers. The fact of the matter is, driving is an economic activity that is already being heavily subsidized. Roads, like any public goods, is funded by government taxes. And I'm not even talking about the direct taxation on road users such as petrol tax and vehicle registration tax. Most of the road maintenance and construction cost is shouldered by the taxed burden of day-to-day -day citizens, some of whom might have never driven a car in years. In short, congestion charges isn't a new special tax on drivers as they themselves receive an extraordinary amount of financial privileges from our governments already. Ironically, because of the time-saving benefits of traveling on traffic-free roads, congestion charges have even shown to improve the economic prospects of road users. The reduced traffic brought by congestion pricing does not merely benefit road users. Significant social benefits were observed in cities that have established congestion charges. In London, for example, the congestion pricing brought down daily CO2 and air polluting emissions significantly, which in terms reduced the rate of asthma and respiratory illnesses in children, and thereby reducing social economic inequality in the city. Despite the positive effect congestion charging brings to the table, you might still have some doubts about this type of policies. 
you might think that the reduction in car traffic would be detrimental to local businesses. While this might be true for businesses located in car-oriented plazas or next to sprawling roads, it is simply not the case in downtown areas. Studies for congestion charges for London found that the implementation of congestion charges had a neutral effect on local businesses. And there are many other factors that has a way more significant impact on commercial activities than congestion charges. Now, while many common criticisms of congestion charges are nonsensical, there are some legitimate concerns towards such policies. The biggest of which is the question of how revenue should be spent. The goal of congestion charges isn't to generate revenue for the government, rather its goal is to shift the travel habits of road users. However, since congestion charge artificially suppresses road usage, drivers must therefore find other means of travel for their trips. And for most parts of the world, that means using public transit. Therefore, logically, the resources raised by congestion charges should go towards improving existing transport options, thereby encouraging more road users to switch to a more sustainable mode of transport. Congestion charges is, and has always been, a controversial topic among the public. However, in the realm of transportation engineering, it is considered as an effective way to curb congestion problem in many major metropolitan areas. Heavily congested municipalities such as New York City recently announced their intention to establish a congestion charge zone in downtown Manhattan for this exact reason. Whether or not this will come to fruition depends on the court of the public opinion. However, their studies have shown that the societal benefit from congestion charging will far exceed the tax burden on car users. The fact of the matter is, these policies have been proven time and time again to provide objective good to the cities they have been implemented in. And any city with a massive congestion problem and a strong transit network should consider establishing congestion pricing policy in part of their downtown core. Hey folks, thanks for watching yet another video. If you have enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. This is the Transportation Channel, and I will see you next time.